Guys, all right, today I'm going to run through using the Dakota Digital Tax Signal interface and how to install it. We're going to be installing that today in our 1980 Trans Am Firebird, which has a LS1 swap. So we want to keep the original Taco. Let's look what's in the box. You can order these online by Dakota Digital. So in the box, we get a couple of things. The stuff your mother always said for you to read. Your instructions. Pretty simple. It's only a few pages. There we go. That's it. Not much to read, guys. And this little cool box right here. Now, this is the SGI-8E. It's the electronic, so it has little push buttons. The version before it was the D. It actually has jumpers you had to manually set. This one, you'll simply press these buttons to set it according to your cylinders and everything else. Now, in this application, obviously, we're going to be putting this into a uh, upgraded... Uh, uh, second gen Firebird with an LS engine so what we need to do is um, set it all so here we go guys there's a couple little hugs here a bit of instructions and uh, I'll film some of the stuff I do and you guys will get a look at how it all works cross your fingers it's gonna work this is new to me I'm gonna explain it as well when we hook this up there is four wires we're gonna hook up that's your 12 volt accessory power we're gonna hook up a ground naturally an ignition system tax signal which will be your uh, wire that comes off of your PCM. And lastly, we're going to need an output, which is on this side. There's two outputs. There's a high voltage output for some tachometers, and there is a standard output to tachometers. Now, second gen Firebird, to be honest, and I'm not sure, but it says right below, if the normal output does not drive your tachometer, use high volt. So we're going to stick with normal to begin with, which is this little, uh, little wire... Uh, screw jumper here and obviously we're going to hook up this one this one and the signal wire there and if that doesn't give us the output we're going to change it there we go following their instructions yourself now right which particular wire are we going to use for our tack if we look at our wiring diagram here as extensive as it is it's a great thing to print up um, you'll notice just here there is our tack right there okay and you've obviously got your positive You've got this one black one here. Now, it's black on the diagram. If you trace it across, it's actually white. Okay, and we track it all the way across. Follow a little maze. Come across here. It actually comes out in the firewall. And um, from there, it connects actually to your uh, distributor on the, on the uh, 1980 Trans Amps. So all I did was, I just looped it back in through the firewall, back down, and there's our signal wire. Very handy to have, guys. If you can find your diagram online, do what I did. Um, you can draw on them and laminate them and just wipe your stuff back off. So it makes working on these cars just that little bit easier. All right. Uh, there is what used to be white. <laughs> you take a wire that used to run to the HEI on the Pontiac 301 turbo motor. I don't want to go chewing the cabling up in case I put the other motor back, which is all operational. So there it is where it goes in the motor. All I did was I just uh, spliced in a feedback wire, which is going to go straight back, and it's going to go straight back inside the cabin again, and I'm going to hook that up into the digital decoder. Um, here's our little unit. Here's our uh, PCM uh, tack wire. Here is the wire we ran from the white wire from the engine bay, and a couple of handy little... Uh, Wires I happen to have connected to nothing, which is a keyed positive on the pink and a ground on the black. And all we're going to do is we're going to hook those straight in to these little jumper things here. Cross our fingers. Now, following the instructions, it says to have the key off. You are then told to uh, press and hold the set switch while turning the key on. So we do that. And it said it will show the current thing. Release the set switch and it will display in. Press and release the include switch until the desired setup option is displayed. So we can go through and choose our option. So in, eight cylinders. All right. We can change that. I wish I had 15 cylinders. <laughs> So I'll set it to 8 because it was set 8 anyway. Yep. Out. Got to go back. 
out for a set. It's eight. And I think from what I'm seeing there, we've pretty well set it. I'm not sure, but I'll go with the fact I think it's set. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Let's try it in a sec. All right, welcome back, guys. Um, now, what I've done is I've hooked it all up. I've followed the instructions. So in, in cylinders eight, out eight. And uh, I started up, but what I noticed was the actual uh, gauge was, was out by a bit. Um, when I say a bit, um, on my little uh, OBD2 thing, it was saying I was doing about six and a half, seven. And here it was saying doing less than five. So I tweaked the settings on there. And what I found with the LS swap, you need to change over input to four cylinder, output to V8 right and what happens is they match so if we turn it there we go so we got about yeah about six thousand there and we're pulling close to six thousand there so that's all working fine and of course uh, you now have a working tachometer in your car and all I have to do now guys is uh, obviously Put this thing up underneath uh, nice and neatly out of the way and that's how we get our taco working on an ls swap in a second gen firebird or camaro hope you guys enjoyed this video do me a favor please like subscribe and share all the above tell me how much i'm an idiot and my accent stupid and i'll be happy to comment back one day bye for now guys cheers